Hello everybody, it's Dr. Kelly. How are you doing tonight? I hope everybody's doing really great, having a great day. We are going to talk about some belly issues today. And so everybody who's watching, thank you for watching. Remember to like, remember to share the video because there are so many, many, many people who suffer with belly problems. Belly pain, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, heartburn, and we can resolve them all. So please like, please share, please put somebody's name, you know, tag them in it if you know they have a belly problem and they need to hear some of the things I'm going to say. Okay. So how many of you have suffered from some belly problems? Write me a comment. Hi, Jojo. Have you ever had some belly problems? Any of those that I just said? If you did, I want to hear from you. I want to know what your belly problem is, and I want to know if you've resolved it. And if you haven't, you need to pay attention. You need to listen, and you need to find out what the top three reasons are that people have belly problems. So I decided we'd talk about belly problems. Hey, Bev, today, because actually, I thought of this on Monday, because I was having a belly problem on Monday. In fact, me and my husband were having a belly problem. So, hey, Shana. Oh, no, going for an endoscopy. Hi, Sherry. Nice to see you in Texas. Um, okay, so my day on Monday started um, good. You know, um, got up, had my coffee. I have a milk alternative in there. I make a latte. I put some good fats in there. Very routine. And um, then I went for a run, took my dogs for a run. I didn't have um, a patient um, scheduled until the afternoon, so I had time to take my dogs for a run in the morning. Perfect. Love it when that's happening. So after two miles, and in fact, in that third mile, I'm like, oh, we got to walk. I'm like, whoa, I am getting some cramping going on. Holy man. Whoo, had to walk, walk, telling my dog he's got to walk. And he likes to run and run and run and run and run. I'm like, whoa, okay. I let that settle down, right? And then we'd run for a while and then I'd be like, oh, got to stop. So finally got home, went to the bathroom, diarrhea. And what is diarrhea? Because I always have to glare this, clarify this with people. Diarrhea would mean you're pooping water. It's just water coming out. Maybe some chunks here and there, but it's, whew, it's just coming out really fast. I had that problem going on through most of the day on Monday. And when my husband got back from his run, it was actually really short. He didn't go very far because he didn't think he could make it back home in time before he had to use the bathroom. Now, what on earth is going on? I don't usually have a belly problem. We talk about pooping a lot, and that's because I want you to make sure that you go every single day, right? Well, because both he and I had this acute diarrhea episode, we pretty much know that it was something that we both ate. So lots of times our belly can get disrupted like that, give us an acute episode of belly pain or diarrhea or bloating because something you ate within the last 24 to 48 hours was contaminated. You hear about that, salmonella poisoning, um, you know, lettuce that gets contaminated, peanut butter that gets contaminated. I am not sure what it was that did it to us, but the salad that we did eat on Sunday, did we eat that on Sunday, is still sitting in my fridge because I normally eat it the next day too, and I was having that belly problem, and so I waited, and I'm not sure if there's something on that salad, and I just need to throw it out, but anyway, it could be a culprit. So then, you know, I just had uh, someone else scheduled because they're having a belly problem. And I just spoke with a college student having a belly problem. And so constantly, constantly, people are calling me up because they have a belly problem. Then I have this acute episode and I thought, okay, we need to talk about these belly problems, right? And you need to be able to clue into 
what your triggers are, and towards the end, I'm going to give you that discount again if you're interested in getting some foods tested. So my example, again, is an acute isolated incident. By Monday evening, I was doing all right. Everything was settling down, back to normal pretty much on Tuesday, definitely back to normal uh, today. So that was caused by something I ate. I don't know what it was. Definitely it was um, contaminated or infected, and it made me sick. All right. So, but like these other cases, these other people, both men and women equally, although I do work with a lot of high school students and early college students um, to help them figure out what's giving them the belly pain. So chronic, oh, my belly hurts. If your child, if your, you know, student is always complaining of belly pain, in fact, one of my children as well, two years ago, every time that we made eggs, he'd say, ugh, I don't feel good after I eat eggs. Ugh, I don't really want to eat that. I don't feel good after I eat that. Hmm. He would get belly aches. He would just feel kind of blah to his belly. He had a hard time clarifying exactly what it was that didn't feel good for a while. But when I got him to change his food, um, dramatically improved and we know the foods that um, make him feel sick. So number one thing that gives people belly pain is the food that you're eating. It's the food, people. If you are getting any kind of belly pain, if you are feeling, hi, Carol, um, bloated, if you are super gassy, super burpy, super tooty, and if, you know, if your belly's always rumble, 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 if you've got heartburn, you know, how many people do you know who pop the Tums, take the Rolaid, I'm on some Pepsid, I take some Zantac, because they're always having pressure right here or always complaining of heartburn? It's not your heart burning. It's acid going the wrong way up your esophagus because you've got a belly problem. Number one per reason that people have every single one of those belly problems is because of the food they're eating. Now, most general thing that I can tell you right now, today, that can start to make a difference is to cut out a few certain foods. Obviously, if you eat something and you don't feel good, stop eating it. I know that seems hard, but I literally have to say that to people. So I asked the person this week, so if you know that eating that pizza makes you feel bad, why haven't you stopped eating pizza? Because everybody eats pizza, mm, everybody loves pizza, but if it makes you sick, stop eating it. So first thing, listen to your body. And sometimes that's really hard because just like I said, I'm not sure which food made me sick, which one's contaminated that I had eaten. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I don't know what's really making me sick. That's when we have to look further and do some testing. But if you know you don't feel good after you eat something, for example, eggs, stop eating the eggs. Stop eating foods with eggs. Okay, but in general, if you just needed to start somewhere, cut out gluten. Cutting out gluten always, always makes a difference. Cutting it out for one week isn't enough, though, people. You need to cut it out for a month, for two months, and then evaluate how much your belly has changed, okay? Cut out gluten, cut out dairy. Those would be the top two foods when food is the number one thing giving you a belly problem. Again, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, just belly aches, reflux. Any of those symptoms are can be caused by the foods that you're eating, and then it makes your belly bad, it makes it worse, it makes it deteriorate, and then you get more complicated things going on. So cut out gluten, cut out dairy, and if you can really be good, cut out soy and cut out corn. Those four things are super, super inflammatory. It'll make a world of difference in your health if you change that. Now, if you keep having belly problems, that's when you gotta look at foods deeper. 
So as I wrote in the comments, I have this great food course. I spent a lot, a lot of time. I dumped all of my knowledge about foods, about food allergies, about healing the gut is all in that course. And if you have belly problems, I highly, highly recommend you get the course. Discount for you today for listening and for sharing Foods 15, F-O-O-D-S 15. And here is what a little discount card looks like. I know you can't read the Foods 15, but it's a 15% discount, and I wrote it in the comments as well. That gets you food tested and the food course. Um, okay. Hi, Mindy. I want to look back. Sheena, what did you ask? Can food cause all those symptoms at the same time or kind of like a rotation of symptoms? Um, super good question. And I would have to say it's completely variable because yes, it could cause all of those things at the same time. Sometimes though, you might feel one and not the other. Sometimes you could feel it immediately when you eat a food. And sometimes it's an accumulation and then you just feel awful and you have everything going on. So um, it can be any of those and um, not necessarily rotating, but you definitely can have any of them because they're all signs of inflammation and those foods are reacting to your immune system causing inflammation. So cut out gluten and dairy for sure, add in or cut out also corn and soy, and that will get you headed on the road and not cost you any money. But then when you need to know that, like the woman earlier this week, bananas. Bananas are causing her a big problem. She had no idea bananas were on her food list until we tested her. So the food list, getting your food allergies tested is a tremendous help because I guarantee there's going to be food on there that you're eating that you had no idea was making your body react and was causing a lot of your, your belly pain. Okay, so that was food. Number one issue for causing any and all of those belly problems. Second thing, anybody want to guess? And none of you who have commented, thank you for commenting, none of, the, none of you guys told me if you've ever had belly problems. Do you have belly problems? Do you know anybody who has belly problems? And what kind of belly problems? And maybe something that worked for them. Just know that I am not a here, take this and it'll solve your belly problem kind of a girl. And I'm always seeing those types of things advertised by everyone under the sun. You know, oh, just take my product and it'll cure all your problems. It doesn't work that way. First, you got to stop beating up your body. And first, we got to find out what your problem is. So food is the number one reason. Second reason infection. Definitely been working with a woman since the spring. Her belly problems flared up when she went on a ketogenic diet. Now, how many of you are familiar with a ketogenic diet, right? We hear tons and tons and tons about ketogenic diet because so many people are doing it and so many people are losing weight and it cut, cuts out sugar. It, you know, it eliminates carbs. And, um, you know, it's been really a successful thing for a lot of people. But so why did this woman get all of this belly pain when she started a ketogenic diet? So she jumped on board. She was doing it with another family member. Um, everything's going good, but she really wasn't quite eating enough. She was actually getting dizzy and lightheaded and weak and severe belly pain and severe cramping and oh, things were bad. She was thinking she might have candida. Yeah, that can do that to you. I've met many, many, many people who have done candida cleanses and that helps and half the time it doesn't eliminate enough of the candida or it doesn't really wipe out the candida, but helps a ton because they clean up their diet mostly. So she actually, beyond the candida, ooh, yeah, H. pylori, Shana, is rough too. H. pylori is a bad infection in your gut and they will always tell you how H. pylori is linked to ulcers. So um, this woman though, parasites, Oh yeah, parasites. Um, fact of the matter is, 
most of us get parasites. Yeah, at some point or another. And tell me how many of you, if you're watching live or if you're watching it on replay, thank you. How many of you take Pepsid or Zantac, Amiprazole, you know, Tums, Rolaids? How many of you are taking those kinds of supplements and medications which suppress the acid? How many of you? Who is? And do you know that when you suppress the acid, did you know that you're supposed to have acid in your stomach? Yeah, the acid in your stomach doesn't cause an ulcer. An infection can cause an ulcer. Low acid lets you have parasites. Oh, yay! Everybody who's taking an acid suppressant, Pepsid, Zantac, you get heartburn all the time, so you're lowering the acid, you're lowering the acid. It's not an acid problem. Heartburn is not an acid problem. It's acid in the wrong spot. You're supposed to have acid in your stomach. The pH of your stomach is supposed to be like one. Very, very acidic, because guess what? It kills parasites, because you get parasites on your food all the time. Just like I started tonight giving you the example that, whoa, something my husband and I ate, whoo, gave us a belly problem, gave us both diarrhea, water, bad news for not 24 hours, thank you, Jesus, but for, you know, the majority of the day, a good 12 hours of constant diarrhea. Something bad was in there that our body couldn't wipe out, gave us the diarrhea, and we needed to let it out. That's the other thing I didn't say about that. When you get an infection, like that example, should I have taken Lomotol? Should I have taken something to stop the diarrhea? No, because whatever went in, it needed to get out. It's better out then in, because if I keep it in, it'll keep making me sick and keep making me sick. So this other woman that I started to talk about, she went on the ketogenic diet. Yay! Oh my God, she was lightheaded. She was dizzy. She started getting really weak and oh, she had cramping, bad belly pain because her parasites were mad. They were balking. They were fighting back. And so um, she's seen the parasites and we started to target the parasites and whoa, caused her a lot of belly pain because they get really mad in there. They go through a vicious cycle. But the reality is that there are a lot of microscopic parasites that we can't see on our food. And our first line of defense, protection against bacteria and parasites is to have enough acid in your stomach. So think about that. Share this with anybody who takes those kinds of medications and ask them how that's good for them. How is that good for your body? It's actually not. It actually contributes to the belly problem and to inflammation in the, in the gut and creates a problem with the tissues down the road. Does it help their symptom? Absolutely. That's why it is a billion dollar industry and why there are so many different types of acid suppression in your stomach because they make lots and lots and lots of money because they do stop the symptom most of the time, but they're a band-aid. They're not the real issue. The issue is that the acidic is going up your esophagus. It's coming up this way instead of going to your small intestines. All we got to do is get you pooping and get it going in the right direction and heal those tissues and stop it from going up into your esophagus. So belly problems, heartburn, bloating, rumble, rumble, rumbling, diarrhea, constipation, just belly pain, whatever it is, food is the number one reason. Infection is the number two reason, and that could be infection with parasites, with candida, with a bacterial imbalance, with, like Shana said, H. pylori, and there are several other types of infections that could be causing any of those symptoms, okay? So foods have got to change. If that doesn't solve the problem, you got to look for infection. And then guess what? The third thing, the top of the top three things that give people belly pain and belly problems, what do you think it could be? It's something that um, causes a lot of problems in the body all over. And it kind of goes with the saying of 
having a gut feeling, right? Have you ever felt stressed, stressed out? Or you're worried about something and you kind of got, you got this weird feeling in your belly because you're really worried about that. Or you're so excited to go do that. Or, you know, you're going on a roller coaster and you're so excited and you know it's going to tickle your belly. And stress, those stress hormones wreak havoc in your belly. That you got a gut feeling, that saying comes from that. Okay. Stress no matter if it's mental stress, physical stress, made up stress, worried stress, you don't sleep stress, um, you know, name any single type of stress on your body and it could be causing your belly pain. I have literally met people who get very anxious, very anxious, ah, and instead of crying, instead of lashing out, instead of whatever, they get belly pain or belly problem, they gotta go to the bathroom. Right. Um, I worked with a woman years ago who was a big runner, big runner, like ultra marathon type runner. Um, so that's like long running for hours. She would do at time, but she came to see me because she could only run on routes where there was a porta potty because she was otherwise going to be pooping her pants. She'd be running and she'd have to go and she'd be running and she'd have to go. She'd be going in the woods because there was no other place to go. She did not have infection. I thought she might have in the beginning, but we changed her foods. We healed her tissue. We calmed down the inflammation. And then she could run without having to worry about finding the next bathroom because she had a poop so bad and she didn't want poop in her pants. So guys, many, many, many different reasons and triggers that you can have belly problems. And as the question was asked earlier, it can be all different types of belly problems. It could be one belly problem. It could be multiple belly issues or symptoms, I should say. Belly pain has been pretty frequent of people um, coming to see me asking, what can I do about this belly pain? If you have a belly problem, cut out those foods that I mentioned. Okay, gluten and dairy, corn and soy. Gluten and dairy for sure will make a difference. If you want to know more specifically, go to a discoveryhealthlifestyle.com and find out what foods are making you sick. Okay, Foods 15 will give you a 15% discount off of that when you go to my lifestyle website, a discoveryhealthlifestyle.com. Get your foods tested, get the education to know how to eat, what to change, what does this mean. It's, it's just a jam-packed, full of information kind of a course, um, so it's there for your benefit plus the testing. Okay, so do that. Um, Otherwise, belly problems could be infection. Remember that. Get a comprehensive stool test done. And then you need to evaluate your stress, your stress levels. But I tell you, those first two, super powerful at eliminating belly problems, at totally eliminating those belly problems, changing your food, making sure that you check for infection, and clearing the infection makes a world of difference in all of those belly issues. So thanks for all the comments. Thanks for listening. I hope that was helpful. Um, you know, and Shane, I'm going for your EGD. Great. Um, because if there is something more going on inside, uh, they're going to see it. But oftentimes it's just, it's a ton of inflammation. And depending on how much inflammation is there, they may or may not really find anything. So sometimes I know it can be disappointing when they don't find anything, but it's a blessing when they don't find anything because then you're not given a disease title. And so then you go back to your food, you go back to looking for other types of infection because they're not going to see infection, although they can do a swab to look for H. pylori for you from that EGD. And then you need to start to rebuild, okay? We need to get rid of the things that are causing the belly pain. Then we need to calm the inflammation. We need to make sure the bowels are moving. And we need to heal the tissues. There's lots of good things that we can do to heal that gut tissue. And um, just taking some supplements to help to do that makes 
a world of difference as well when you go through those steps. So I wish you the best on your um, procedures there. Anybody else have some questions? Sherry says, no heartburn or acid reflux, so never have to take anything like Tums, etc. Fantastic. Good, good. That's awesome. Glad to hear that. Um, I'm just looking back to see if there were any other questions. So if you have a question, you know, please go ahead and ask. And Shana, you're very welcome. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. And uh, then let me know what I can do for you. Um, Okay, so thanks for joining me. I um, hope you learned something. What is the best thing for chronic constipation? Asks Jennifer. Okay, Jennifer. So first, always take a look at your diet. Very easily, there can be something that is um, making you constipated. For example, somebody who eats bananas every single day can easily get constipated because bananas are super constipating. You need to eat more greens. You need to eat more vegetables. Okay, start with that. Get more fiber. All of those general recommendations are really, really good. So if you're not eating greens, if you're not eating vegetables, that's the problem. But then usually when I start to work with someone, when they're having a belly problem, aloe vera juice helps tremendously to change the inflammation in the in the GI tract. And then I use natural calm, magnesium citrate. One teaspoon dissolved in a glass of water twice a day helps to pull water into the bowel. So you need to make sure that you're drinking water, that you're hydrated, and that gets the, the bowels moving. It's the most effective way um, while somebody is improving their diet to get the habit going so that you do start going. And then as you get better on your food, most people can actually decrease the amount of the natural calm or magnesium citrate that they need. Great question. Um, Rose, what do you take for H. pylori and parasites? So there's a variety of things, Rose. Um, H. pylori licorice works great against H. pylori. Um, having high levels of um, a good probiotic that has many different strains, super helpful as well. Um, golden seal is another herb that's super helpful against H. pylori. Parasites, wormwood, excuse me, wormwood or artemisia is a great herb against parasites. So is golden seal. So is starving the parasites, like no sugar, like getting rid of the sugar and the carbs will help to get them out. Um, so parasites are hard. You have to treat that longer because they grow and they hurt and they lay eggs. So you might get the big parasites out, but they laid their eggs and then the eggs hatch and then you have them again. So it's like a repetitive thing um, to get them through. Those are just some things that can be used. There are definitely other herbs and natural products that can help with both of them. And there are also medications that specifically target both of those too. And sometimes that's needed. Carol, do eating foods like veggies make a difference whether you eat them raw or cooked? Absolutely. So um, cooked vegetables are always going to be easier to digest, okay, because cooking it breaks it down. It breaks down some of the fiber, okay. Putting it in a smoothie or juicing it makes raw vegetables easier to digest because the blender or the juicer broke down a lot of the fiber or eliminated the fiber. Raw foods, the most nutritious, absolutely, the absolutely best for you. But if you have a belly problem, you're not going to be able to tolerate a lot of raw food. You're going to have to work up to that because it's really, really hard, harder on your digestive tract to break down raw food. So cooked food, much easier to digest, but less nutrients. Raw food, super high in nutrients, harder to digest. And unless you've got a gut of steel and it's working perfectly, if you just start eating a ton of raw, you're going to be giving yourself a bellyache because of that phenomenon. 
Um, Jennifer, eating keto, lots of vegetables and lots of water. Awesome. Good job. And you're welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for listening. Thanks for commenting, everybody. Um, I really appreciate you being here. And I hope you learn something when I talk. I hope I give you some um, useful tips that can serve you, that you can take away and do some things for yourself. Even when I work one-on-one -on -one with somebody doing consults, for a six month period of time, which is often what somebody needs to get things to really turn around. Um, we need to, we need to work closely and we need to reinforce the lifestyle and reinforce and answer the questions and keep going and keep working on it. So my goal is always to teach you, um, through these Facebook sessions, as well as when I work with somebody one on one is to teach them how to take care of themselves in the future so that I can set them up that they won't need me again, unless it's something new or, you know, something else happens. But the goal is that I give you all the tools that you need so that you know what you you need to do to prevent yourself from having a problem again and to be as healthy as possible so that you prevent problems that you would have gotten if you didn't change in the first place. So I look forward to seeing you again soon and have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next week. And thanks for the feedback, Sherry. I really appreciate that. Good night, everybody.